And good afternoon and welcome. My name is Randy Price. He is Matt Price. We are the Price Group and uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar, which is entitled Retirement Planning Timeline. If you're close to retirement, you know uh, all the details that come into this and our goal over the next 30 to 40 minutes would be to give you some uh, useful information, helpful information, and uh, sort of point you in the right direction with regard to some of the decisions that need to be made. If you have some questions, type them into the, uh, the chat box and uh, we'll try to answer them as we go. Who we are, uh, the Price Group is, uh, is family owned and, uh, and operated. Uh, 45 plus years of experience between uh, myself uh, and Matt Price. Uh, I think the most important thing is we do follow a fiduciary standard. It's a legal term, but it's a very important. We can talk more about that as we go. And uh, we do have a uh, specific uh, expertise in this uh, uh, field of retirement. 82% uh, or more of our clients are now retired. Randy's too humble, so I'll brag on his behalf. Uh, we've been humbled to receive awards from Barron's Forbes Financial Times over the years. Uh, if you get our emails, you've probably seen our Wealth Coach podcast. Here as of late, Randy and I both, we are uh, CFP certified financial planners, along with getting our SEMA certified investment management analyst designation uh, from Wharton. Uh, uh, for me, a number of years back for Randy, he won't admit it, but quite a few years back. Uh, so uh, we Thanks. think it's, it's important and uh, that's something we take very seriously. A uh, little bit about our firm, Steward Partners, based off the biblical definition of stewardship. Uh, we're not some uh, uh, firm that may or may not uh, survive just in the next few months, have over 26 billion uh, of client assets under administration as of the end of last year. We think it's really important. Our firm is not owned by a bank. And, and there's a salient difference. We can talk more about this offline if you have an interest, but uh, we're, we're an employee-owned firm, which, which makes a big difference. We use uh, Raymond James. There'll be a few more to be announced here over the next few months as our back office or as our custodian where client assets are, are held. So let's look at today's agenda. Retirement planning when you're two to five years out, sort of dreaming, thinking, hoping, Retirement planning when you're less than one year out, you're saying, wow, I better be making some plans and then planning after retirement. We're going to break that down. So let's start with uh, section one, retirement planning two to five years out. And uh, what does that entail? As we uh, look before you leap, we would like each of you uh, to either create or update a wealth and investment plan specifically for your particular retirement. We want you to develop a family index number, the rate of return that you'll need to accomplish your goals and objectives in the short, medium, and long term. We'd like you to evaluate your retirement plan contributions, your allocations. We don't want you to be 100% stock if you're a conservative investor, and then the market fall the day after you retire. We'd like to, you to consider the consequences of what a negative year in a stock market would be, sort of like this year. It's effect on your retirement date. It's also effect on your standard of living. And then last, uh, we think it uh, to be good advice to consult and uh, potentially hire a qualified, qualified, uh, we'll talk about a little bit here, advisor who not just uh, does retirement when someone retiring comes along, but this is their specialty, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We've seen a lot of spreadsheets and spreadsheets are, uh, are better than nothing, but uh, is your spreadsheet adequate for retirement? What do we mean by that? Let's look at these four boxes here. Beginning assets of $100,000, average rate of return is 7%, inflation rate of 3%. And we're gonna see in the top left-hand box, we're gonna start out with a negative 15% rate of return, several years of 7% rate of return, and then a 29% year positive return, green means positive in year 10. So your $100,000 ends up at $188,399. Okay, so what? Well, we're gonna flip the returns. We're gonna take the positive 29%, the green, then eight years of 
then a negative 15% in year 10, bottom left-hand box. And we're gonna see you end up the same exact place, $188,399. The sequence of returns has zero effect on your return, your total return when you're in your accumulation phase. Now your accumulation phase is where you are now. You haven't retired yet. You're not taking any money out. You're probably adding money to, the company's probably matching. You get your statement, looks like we're doing okay. Slip it back in the desk, go back to work, start thinking about little league football or hun hunting season or, or what, whatever. Let's go to the two right boxes on top, uh, top right. We're gonna start taking a withdrawal of 10%. Again, we're gonna mix in the negative 15% in year one. And whoa, what happens? You end up running out of money about uh, the middle of year nine and a half, but middle of year nine, almost to year 10, and you're in the hole $7,718. Flip the rates of return, take a positive 29% in year one. And again, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this taking out $10,000 has a dramatic rate of return because you are now in your distribution phase of retirement. So spreadsheets are good. What we're gonna recommend is better. And let's look before we leap with regards to retirement spending. You need more than an investment guy, you need a wealth coach. That's our opinion. That's one of our tag taglines. You know who Benjamin Graham is? He was Warren Buffett's mentor. The best way to measure success of uh, investing is not by whether you're beating the market, but whether you put in plan a financial plan and a behavioral discipline that will likely to get you where you want to go. So we do what? Holistic financial planning. Of course, investments, but insurance, cash flow, estate planning, tax planning, retirement planning, and uh, we think this is one of the secret sauces of, uh, of being successful during retirement. So what should a retirement plan include? We think it's important to note retirement is not an event. It's an ongoing process. So people kind of think of retirement like a photograph. It happens once and then it's over, but this is something that continues to happen year over year. We, we talk to a lot of people who say, yeah, I got a plan. It, it's up here. It's in my head. Uh, we don't think it's a, a plan, though, until it's written down. I think that's import, important. And our goal, we call our retirement plan a live well plan, kind of for two reasons, partially because Randy and I are a little bit of cheese balls, but we also want our clients to live well. And, and our live well plan helps us answer these questions. How much can you spend in retirement? How long will your money last? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what rate of return you need. We call that our family index number. And then what type of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, how do we create a portfolio to meet my income needs? We think retirement is an income-driven exercise, and uh, that's what we really focus on for, for all retired clients. So a little bit more about that family index number. This is a personalized rate of return that is peculiar to each client that helps us determine what rate of return we need in retirement. Now, some years we will underperform our family index number. Other years we might outperform our family index number. Our goal would be over a market cycle, call it 10 to 15 years to average this family index number with your investment portfolio. I had a phone review this morning with a client and she said, hey, inflation's up, interest rates are up. Have you seen what those individual tax-free bonds are paying us? Should we increase our family index number? And, and it was a, what I thought a really good intuitive question. And, and our short answer right now is no, because we're not trying to see what is this family index number in the just absolute present as we look at the world today, but what do we think is gonna happen over the next 10 to 15 years? And, and so it, it's more an average, what we do is we provide clients with quarterly performance updates in addition to their monthly statements that track this against your family index number. So every quarter you're looking to say, okay, am I ahead of track, am I behind track, or am I right on track? 
So I know a lot of this information can can sound high level. What we want to do is is give a few tangible, real ideas that you may or may not have considered. Uh, the alternative backdoor IRA contribution, you might have heard of this referred to as a backdoor raw. What this is doing is you're taking a non-deductible deposit into a traditional IRA, meaning you don't get to itemize that on your, your, your tax return. And you, you can do that if you're above 50 up to $7,000. The next day, you do a Roth conversion. And that is a non-taxable event. Only the earnings are taxable. But in this case, if you just held it there for one day in cash, it's not going to have grown or shrunk. And, and so this is a way to get additional dollars into a Roth account if you are maxed out or if you're over the uh, income thresholds of, of uh, making that happen. There's a few caveats, we call it the pro rata rule. You need to be careful because you can't do this if you have a pre-existing IRA. Uh, our understanding is that the 401ks are not included in that, but please talk to your tax advisor uh, and confirm that is their understanding as well. Uh, second idea, pretty similar, but a little bit different. This is an alternative Roth 401k contribution. So this makes a whole lot of sense for those of you listening that are still working. Uh, most 401k plans will allow you to put in pre-tax dollars or Roth dollars, and then there's a lower threshold that you can put in after-tax dollars in addition to maxing out the pre-tax or the Roth portion of the 401k. And if that's the case, what you can do once a year is you can take those after-tax dollars and you can roll those into the Roth 401k portion of your retirement plan. So very similar to the last slide, uh, but there are a few different, a few pieces that are different. It's also worth noting, if you were about to retire, you can take those after-tax contributions and the basis, the portion that you roll, that you deposited in, can be rolled into a Roth IRA. The, the earnings or the, the capital appreciation of that would be typically rolled into a pre-tax or if you took it out, it would be uh, it would be taxable income. So uh, here's a what we think a really good picture in this, I would say really is a picture that defines how we look at the world, how we manage money. We, we ask clients to evaluate their investment risk budget. And you see the purple line there. This is a snapshot from 2000 to 2015. So a little bit dated, but it tells a good story. And that purple line is the S&P 500, the overall stock market. And we say, what if you had 50% of the downside, but only 50% of the upside as well? And what you can see there on the green line is you end up in a volatile market uh, getting to a better place than the than the, the S&P 500 that in this 15 year period proved to be a very volatile index. So it, it's a question worth considering. One can make a fairly compelling argument that the next 10 years in the stock market are not gonna be as rosy as the last 10 years. And if that's the case, we wanna make sure we have uh, our risk budget really, really well under wraps, knowing what we own, why we own it, uh, to prepare for possibly another turbulent 10, 15 years. So are you ready for retirement? One of our considerations, uh, consider hiring, uh, at least talking to an advisor. Why uh, would we say that? Uh, number one, emotions matter when investing. Lots of times uh, it's, it's very difficult to get out of the way of your emotions when you're investing your own money. Mistakes are obviously very much more costly as you approach retirement because the amount of money under your, under your management increases. Uh, it's a stress reducer. Uh, the more investment options, alternative investments, individual bonds, strategies for additional income available to the advisor. And uh, what's interesting, you look at the chart on the right, the average investor has underperformed the market. This is a uh, study by one of the mutual fund companies 
And they looked and they said, okay, here's the returns over the last 20 years. Here's real estate investment trust, REITs, here's high yield bonds, junk bonds, here's S&P 500, here is traditional fixed income, here is what's your house in, and whoop, right there, 2.9% is your average investor, and, uh, and also uh, inflation, just right above inflation. Uh, and what happened is mutual funds have done studies, and when people t put money in and, and when mo and people take money out, and typically people have a habit of trying to buy high and sell low uh, as opposed to just, just the opposite. The old adage, how do you make money? Buy low, sell high. That's funny, ha, 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 but much more difficult to do than it's talked about. So we're now going to move to retirement planning less than one year out. What does that look like? You want to evaluate your re retirement income needs, sort of put together a... Uh, uh, a pro forma cash flow, if you will. Uh, evaluate your, if you are uh, uh, fortunate enough to have a lump sum defined benefit pension plan, look at the pension lump sum um, versus the, uh, the monthly annuity. Uh, if you're under 59 and a half or over 59 and a half, there's a different set of rules and strategy associated with that. Create an income strategy for your retirement. Where are you gonna get the money? How's it gonna get there? We don't uh, recommend just uh, selling a portion of the, of the, of the group of mutual funds. Uh, talk more about that here in a little bit. Monitor your retirement plan discount rate. A lot of people retire a little bit sooner, perhaps because of rising interest rates and they want to get out while the discount rate is still low. The lower the discount rate, the higher your lump sum. So it's a uh, inverse uh, relationship. Evaluate ordinary income and capital gains tax rates. That can be uh, helpful in your decision making. And uh, again, consider, consider hiring a, a qualified and also a fiduciary centric advisor, advisor team for that. Your income needs during uh, retirement, inflation, inflation, inflation. Boy, we are seeing that now. The hidden tax um, uh, is something to, uh, to consider. Uh, if, if you do have 6% inflation, cost of living doubles every 12 years. If you have 10% inflation, cost of living doubles every 7.2 years. Uh, we talk about the bank of mom and dad. You know, are your kids going to need some, uh, some help, some assistance uh, alone from mom and dad? Uh, what are your big ticket items? Uh, we've had clients buy motor homes and boats and uh, that sort of thing. Travel is typically a, uh, a big uh, item uh, for, the, uh, for the retirement spending. Ongoing fixed and variable expenses, perhaps you're making gifts to your family, but the rule of thumb is 70 to 80% of your uh, final salary prior to retirement is uh, perhaps what you will need to, uh, to make it uh, and make it well during retirement. So there was a, a white paper written a few years ago, had a really catchy title is 3% the new 4%. And it, it's something worthy of consideration. So I'm sure most everyone has heard of the 4% rule. It's a study dating back to the 1960s where you have a balanced portfolio of stocks and bonds. You can take 4% out per year, inflation adjusted, and you'll never have to worry about running out of money. Well, as we know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000, interest rates when those studies were done were a whole lot higher than they are today. We think, oh my goodness, interest rates are so high today. Well, compared to the last 30, 40, 50 years, they, they still are low on a relative basis. So there's this white paper went on to explain, should we be considering a lower distribution from retirement portfolios just based off the fact that your non-stock money is not yielding as much as it has. And, and we would say not to sound like this is a sales answer, it all depends. It all depends on each family, it depends how old you are, it depends on the type of stocks you own, it depends on your goals and objectives. And, and this is what we're really trying to wrap our arms around when we create this personalized live well plan uh, for families. So we talked a little bit about the, uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a defined benefit pension plan, that uh, in effect defined benefit pension plan offers a lump sum 
you'll want to evaluate sort of the way the pros and cons for your particular situation on the company pension versus the lump sum. Let's go down those company pension plan, income for life, company takes the investment risk. The cons, on the other hand, limited flexibility. Your purchasing power can be really readily diminished by inflation. Uh, there's company risk if the company is not there anymore. Uh, you are considering this, you want a single or joint uh, option, period certain option, how long are you gonna live? Your health considerations for you and uh, your spouse comes into play. You have assets outside of your retirement plan. Are you making any large purchases during retirement? And uh, are there any non-company annuity alternatives that compare favorably? Many times there are. On the lump sum side, and we do see uh, for uh, the, the big companies, uh, historically over 90% of the people do take the lump sum. Uh, it's flexible. There's a potential inheritance for your heirs, inflation protection, and there's a state planning flexibility. The cons is if you're a spendthrift, you can spend through your, uh, your capital. Questions on this side, do you have an investment process? Are you looking to leave potential in inheritance for your heirs? What is your break even when comparing the two, the lump sum and the company pension plan? Where do interest rates go from here? And uh, what's the outlook uh, for, uh, for, for inflation? So uh, anyway, that is, uh, that's very important uh, considerations here. And again, as we sit down with folks, we look at each of these, everybody's different. And uh, we try to, we have the heart of a teacher and we'll sit down and help you uh, evaluate your choices. A uh, quick question just came in. Will you share these slides by email to the viewers? We don't share the slides, but we are recording this. So we can send you the presentation, have a link to YouTube once we get it uploaded in about a week or so. But uh, unfortunately, cannot share the slides. Early retirement uh, is pre-59 and a half. Uh, how do you bridge the gap from when you retire? Say you retire at 58 to get to 59 and a half. The IRS, the government has rules. that says if you take money out before 59 and a half, there can, uh, there can be a penalty. Uh, you could take a one-time distribution to get around that. You could use code section 72T to, uh, to get to where you wanna go. Uh, net unrealized depreciation is uh, another alternative. Use a line of credit, post vote, post-retirement vocational income, or you could sell some after-tax assets uh, with regards to bridging that period of time until you turn 59 and a half. Again, part of the planning, part of looking before you leap, part of having a live well plan. Dividend income matters. We think this is one of the real uh, salient points to make for someone that is approaching retirement or currently retired. We think dividend income is one of the keys to, to having a successful retirement. Here's a look back to the 1940s, and it's a breakdown, each bar represents a decade, a breakdown of the total return and what percentage of that total return came from dividends. So looking back on average, 41% of the total return of the S&P 500, the overall stock market has come from dividends over since the 1930s. So you see some dividend, some decades it's more, some it's less. One can make a fairly compelling argument that the next 10 years, if we do have muted stock returns, that dividends are gonna play a much more important role uh, over the next 10 years. We've heard a lot of times is I'm retiring, I need to be safe and uh, I want to invest in bonds. Let's look at real returns. That's the return that you have after you factor in inflation on a three month treasury bill and a 10 year treasury note. Uh, and uh, for the uh, first part here, we look at the average return from 1928 to 1940. You did, you did fairly well on, uh, on both after inflation uh, uh, you were positive on both of those. Well, little thing called the Second World War started, and uh, the period from 1941 to 1981 was stressed. And so if you look there, your eyes are not deceiving you, you had a negative rate of return uh, on treasury bonds and also treasury bills for that 40-year period. Hmm, okay. Well, what about uh, the years following? Well, 1982 to, 19, to 2021, 
you see just the opposite, uh, had positive uh, yields, positive real returns, if you will, on the bills and the 10-year treasury bonds. And so what does that tell you? <laughs> it tells you historically exactly what has happened, but you, if you're retiring, are not as much interested in what happened behind door number one or door number two or door number three, but you wanna see the right-hand side and what's gonna happen in 2022 and beyond. Now, those of you that uh, are, are keeping up, uh, the inflation has really reared its ugly head for a number of reasons. And so this may be a period where it's very hard, very difficult to get a positive real rate of return for, uh, for several years going forward. So we think that uh, bonds can act as ballast. There's different types of fixed income other than treasury bonds and treasury bills. We talk all about that with, uh, with folks as we sit down. But uh, again, bonds, uh, we would say, are not always safe, as people would think they are. So investing without a process, this is a, a busy slide. Let me try to do our best to explain it. The, the grayish line here is the S&P 500. And what the, the blue lines are, are the fund flows tracked by mutual fund companies. So what you can see here, people were, retail investors were adding the most two stocks at the end of 1999 or early 2000, which arguably was, was the worst time to add money to stocks over the past uh, 20, 25 years. You see the opposite is also true. Uh, we, we probably remember what happened. 2000 was a negative year. 2001 was a negative year. 2002 was a negative year in the stock market. People after three years said, you know what, I've had enough. I'm getting out. And so you see one of the uh, largest selling points was here at the end of 2002. Same thing happened at the bottom of 2008 or early spring 2009. Sold in the absolute wrong time. So uh, retail investors can be emotional. Uh, statistically speaking, they have a propensity to, to buy high, sell low. And we think it is, it is critically important to have an investment process that takes the emotions out of investing. Continuing on with that thought, why do I need an investment process? Well, you need to know how much you can spend in retirement. How do you invest your portfolio to meet your needs? Your portfolio may be exactly equal to your neighbor across the street who worked for the same company and has the same uh, situation, but uh, you may be radically different in some critical areas. So uh, many investors make poor financial decisions during stressful periods. Uh, touched on this a little bit earlier, letting emotions get in the way of reason. Discipline and income generation are the core principles of our process-driven investment strategy. And our goal here at the Price Group is to preserve your assets while making, uh, while generating the level of income that you need to meet your after-tax living expenses on an inflation-adjusted basis. So we've gone from before retirement, one year before retirement, and now, Matt, tell us about planning after retirement. The planning after retirement, this is something we like to do for clients on a, a regular reoccurring basis. We want to stress test your portfolio. Uh, when you go get your annual physical, what's the first thing the doctor does? They put on that blood pressure arm strap. They take your blood pressure. Uh, we, we think this is a pretty equivalent test that we do on portfolios. Draw your attention there to the khaki highlighted box of 36%. What this is saying is if you're taking 4% out from your investment portfolio per year during retirement and your portfolio suffers a 20%, I won't say loss, it's not a loss until you sell, but a drawdown of 20%, you don't need 20% to get back to break even. You need 36% to get back to break even. Uh, so with that being said, the reason that this is important is Randy mentioned earlier, mistakes become more costly. It is when, when you enter into the retirement phase it is much more important to, to think about preserving principle in a down market. And that's how we look at the world. 
Uh, we, we're not necessarily trying to outperform some arbitrary index when everything's going up. We're always looking at risk controls and how do we take care of clients in, in the down markets, in the 2022s, to make sure that this number for us to get back to break even is not substantially high and it's something that is feasible. Do you plan any ideas for consideration? Hold assets generating in, income in your qualified accounts, your IRA type accounts. Uh, if you're making charitable contributions, uh, avail yourself of what we call the QCD, Qualified Charitable Distribution, where you can give money out of your uh, IRA if uh, you're over 70 and a half. Uh, gifting of appreciated stock is another good way to give some money to charity. Where would you take a distribution for retirement? Would you take it out of a taxable or a tax-free account? Consider Roth conversions if that is applicable. Withdraw IRA assets before RMDs to, uh, to minimize uh, having a big tax impact at, uh, at 72 now when uh, you need to take money out of your IRA. And planning in retirement should be benchmarked against your goals, not against some arbitrary standards. Uh, we talk about here at the uh, price group that uh, our clients need comfort, clarity, and confidence. When you get clarity from the from having a uh, wealth plan, uh, you get you get uh, confidence. Confidence leads to comfort. Uh, tell us about that, Matt. Yeah, so Randy's like our old Baptist preacher. He's got his three C's, and we get there by creating our live well plan. And and so we we have countless stories where people for the first time, see it all put together. And it's not because the, the people we talk to, our clients are not uh, able to do it themselves. There are just so many moving pieces when, when putting together a retirement plan uh, that, that can factor into that. We, in our live well plan, we play the what if game. What if inflation's higher? What if I spend more? What if I wanna travel more? What if my investment rate of return is lower? Uh, what if I go back and consult part time for two years? And so we can we can on the fly when we're having a meeting, build these these different components into the live well plan uh, to the, the base case that we've already put together. So clients are able to access this within their online portal. So when we're at home or over the weekend, you you have the autonomy to make changes to your live well plan yourself and see those changes uh, update in real time. So you're going to interview an advisor. What uh, should you be aware of? What should you ask? And uh, how does that process go? Well, we think a couple of important things. Number one, fiduciary standard. Does this advisor represent you or some sort of uh, big corporate uh, parent, perhaps a bank? Do they have a transparent cost structure? Uh, experience matters. Uh, are the people that you're dealing with certified financial planners, which is sort of the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the blue chip standard for our industry? Are they a certified investment management analyst, the SEMA? Uh, do they have experience, uh, experience team with a uh, succession plan? Uh, we think a team is uh, far better than a single hang your hat uh, individual. Uh, do they do most of their work in the area that you're looking at? Uh, they need to be retirement specialists, and that's our niche here at the Price Group. Uh, we prepare a personal retirement plan. It's not a cookie cutter approach. We have a very low client to advisor ratio. That's from having five people on our team, uh, and it works very well. Uh, and you also want someone, a, a team, a group that can communicate with you speak in a manner that you can uh, readily understand, provide, as we talked about, that written holistic uh, investment wealth plan, we call it. Um, uh, we, we do that for every, every, every client and we call it our live well plan. We want to try to anticipate the needs of our clients and uh, you'll, uh, we'll promise from you, promise, give you systematic, outbound communication to keep you up. And so if you want to request our complimentary guide, 10 questions you should ask your financial advisor, then uh, you, can, you can let us know and we're happy to, uh, to uh, forward that to you.
So we're very appreciative of your time. Uh, Matthew, questions or comments from uh, the folks who have uh, so graciously taken time to join us? Another question, are precious metals a part of your investment portfolio? Currently, the answer is no. We have owned some in the past. Uh, we're, we're just not huge believers that uh, precious metals are a great place to park a substantial piece of an investment portfolio uh, during retirement for a prolonged period of time. And one of the biggest reasons for that, uh, most outside of a few gold mining companies that are very volatile, they don't, precious metals don't produce income. And so it brings us back to one of our uh, really primary considerations for clients that are retired. It's an income driven exercise. And uh, so happy to talk more about that offline. So feel free to reach out to us with uh, further questions or uh, just general comments uh, there in the picture. That's, uh, that's Maddie, that's Tiffany, uh, Matt, and then Melissa on, uh, on, uh, on his, uh, his left, the picture's right. So uh, we are the price group. And again, here to, uh, to help you. We're very appreciative of your time. Hope you have a uh, great afternoon and thank you again for taking time to join us for today's webinar.